family, we want to thank each and every one of you for your presence here today. I know Will would be tickled to death and honored to know that you gathered together here for him. This time, let's all bow our heads and pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, dear God, we bow before you. God, here with broken hearts, grieving, Lord, over the loss of a dear friend, a child, a brother, a nephew. God, you know the hurt that each one feels today, the void, God, that is in their hearts. And Father, we pray and we do ask that, God, you would send the Comforter. God, that you would bring peace and wrap your arms around each and every one. Heavenly Father, we pray and ask God that you would just direct the family in the days, weeks, months, years ahead, Father, that God, that when they begin to grieve again, I pray, Father, for the almighty peace. But God, that they would have the assurance in knowing that, Father, this is not the final goodbye, but rather we'll see you soon. Father, we thank you for the gift of will and the legacy that he's left. We thank you, Father, for the impact that he's made in each and every life. Father, for you have sent a mighty servant here. But God, we know that his work was done. And Father, we pray that you'd help each one of us, God, to take a little will with us and that, Father, that we would live our life the same way he did. For it's in Christ's name we pray, we ask these things. Amen. Lisa and the family, first of all, I want to thank you for giving me this honor today to stand before you and to talk about some of Will's achievements and, and yet how he felt as a friend to many, but to Shelby and I, he felt more like a grandchild. And I'm thankful and honored to stand before you today to participate in this ceremony. First of all, I thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for Will. A lot of people look at Will and, and, and the accomplishments that he's done. Most, most people wouldn't recognize the fact that he went out of his way. Just much so as just like the football team that he couldn't play football. He couldn't run, he couldn't catch the ball. But he did something more important than that. He watched out for the other boys on the team to be sure they were always hydrated. It took a, it took a lot of guts for Will to do this. Will has always been an outstanding person. Sometimes, you know, he, uh, I'm, I'm going to give you an example. Sometimes he was overbearing. Uh, <laughs> him, him and Lisa uh, had just come down to the house one Sunday, and uh, Shelby and Lisa was out on the porch talking. And we'll come in, and I was watching the Dallas Cowboys on TV, and of course, you know, uh, they hadn't won many games, so I wanted to cherish that one. <laughs> and he stood in front of the TV, and I told him, Will, you got to move, buddy. And he just turned around and looked, and yet, he didn't move. I said, Will, 
<laughs> he looked again, and this time it, it seemed like uh, he just stuck his hand in my VCR player, you know, all the way up to his elbow. And I jumped up by that time, and it must have scared him because he ran back outside. <laughs> but but there was a lot of interesting things, and probably some that Ron and Lisa probably don't know or will never know. Um, uh, will was unique in its way. I, I would really would have thought that he was, uh, they would have chosen a long black train as this song, because Will loved to sing that song in church. And when I say in church, we have what they call children's church uh, once a year. Will was one of the very first. Uh, he was always there in a volunteering mode. He stood for what God would have him to do. Even though it was a training session to, to learn people how to carry on services, to be a part of God's house, and, and to do God's will in his life, Will was unique in this way where you had to beg and prod. And, and don't get me wrong, Lisa might have had to do that too. I don't know that part, but I do know that, that Will stood at the podium. What he chose to preach or what he chose to teach Sunday school that day, he was there when he was needed. And I thank the Lord for the memories of Will. One other thing that I'd like to talk to you about uh, concerning Will and, and the humorous way that if you think about someone's life to what they do. He called me one day and he asked me, he said, uh, Mr. Tommy. I said, what is it, Will? He said, I'm stuck, bogged up over here on Scotch Road. <laughs> And uh, I said, okay. Uh, I said, well, I can't help you with that. I said, uh, I said my truck won't go over there. It's four-wheel drive. But anyway, I said, I'll see what I could do. So I called my friend Richard, and he came out of the house, got a chain, and got me. And we rode up. Sure enough, he was bogged down all the way to the axle, you know, in a mud <laughs> hole in the middle of the road. But what was so funny about it, I couldn't understand nothing that he was saying. I said, what's wrong with you, Bo? And by that time, he turned around. And I don't know how much snuff he had in his mouth. <laughs> but I guarantee you that if he would have spit it out, it would have turned late Robinson Brown. <laughs> and uh, he, was, he was just that. He got rid of that. And, and of course, Richard pulled him out of the bog. And, and by that time, his buddy, and I do not remember who he was, he came back on the four-wheeler. And both of them took off. And they were riding side by side, just like, and talking. Richard said, what you reckon they're talking about, Tommy? I said, I don't know. He said, they're probably getting their lives together so when they go home and face Ronnie, they... <laughs> but things like that, uh, it distinguishes a child from a man. Yet, a child can stand forth and be a man in his life in such a way as God had prepared him for. We always like that. I had uh, no problem whatsoever. He was always very accumulative. He was already, always very courteous to me and my family. He was also one that would felt like it was okay for him to get in my van and go home for supper and, and never tell his wife, I mean his mother about it. She had to hunt him down later. But I think Lisa and them knew that he was in good hands. I loved Will. I felt like that he was a grandson and, and yet, I can remember the humorous things uh, that involved in his life. One thing else that is, uh, I like to uh, just rem to remember Will, of course, as I told you about the football and how he manned up considering that. But I wanted to read to you today a couple of verses from Matthew's concerning children. You ask yourself, did, did Jesus love children? What was his attitude towards these children? And, and yet we find as when we study Matthew chapter 18 and 19 that Jesus had a lot to say about children. And if we look at this in chapter 18 verse 2 to 6, some of the things that, were, that caught my attention was well, in the Bible, God tells us that children are a blessing and a, and a gift. Now, that didn't come from Matthew. That, that come from Psalms. But yet, in, in Matthew's, he says their spirits are filled with innocence, joy, and laughter. A happy child 
that when you have a when you have a happy child that you could laugh and you could hug and you could you can share your life with, nothing can replace that. Money, material objects, nothing. It is that joy in your life that you share with your children. Also, Jesus actually tells us to be like children and come to him full of faith and trust. And in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 10, and it tells us to see that you do not despise one of these little ones. If you're a scripture reader, if you read the Bible and you understand what God would have in store for someone who calls one of these little ones to sin, it's not a pretty sight. I'm thankful today for Will. I'm thankful for this family. And, and yet, as I know, that God has a higher purpose for Will Threadgill. And it won't be until we all reach the throne of grace before we find out what that is. But today, I want to again thank this family. I love y'all. I want you to know Ronnie, Lisa, the family. I, I am here. Me and my wife is here for, for your needs. Thank you again. Would y'all pray for me and pray for Will and the family as we close our eyes in prayer for this family itself. Grace Father, I, I do thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord, for the peace that only you can send to this family. I pray, Lord, in, in a humble way that you would just bless and be with them in a very special way. That their lives would forever be changed because of their loved one and will for what he stood for. And I pray, Lord, that it, as we remember him in our thoughts, that we know that he will never be separated from us, that he will always be with us as our parents were, as our grandparents were. He will, he will be absorbed into our thoughts and remember the good things and also the not so good things that he done. But yet, uh, what is tribulation? It builds character. Thank you again for this uh, opportunity. Thank you for this family. Thank you for everything that you've done for this family. And thank the friends for their outpouring of love for Lisa and Ronnie and Miss Helen. Are you all gone? Thank you so much for everything. Amen. What do you say? What do you say to a mama and a daddy who's laying their child to rest? What do you say to a sister, an aunt, an uncle? What do you say? What do you say to a friend that just lost a friend? It's hard to get those words together. But you know, we can stand here and talk all day long. But Will Threadgill preached his funeral by the life he lived. I look around and I see so many faces of people that this young man has touched. Lisa, Ronnie, that has something to do with you today. You raised a great youngin'. God blessed you both with a great gift. And that great gift, I hope and pray that you cherished. I heard a preacher say Sunday that children are like arrows and the parents are a bow. And they're shot out. And it's all dependent upon the aim of the parent in the direction that child will go. And there's no doubt in my mind that Will Threadgill was shot straight. The life he lived left an example and a legacy for each and every one here today to live by, to follow. But I'd like to read to you some of the things that I wrote down. Will one shot, one kill, Threadgill. Born September 19, 2002, entered Heaven's Gates on Friday, May 8th. 
2020. Will left this world <laughs> with a smile on his face. You know, I didn't know that until he said, told me yesterday that in that final moment, he just had the biggest smile. You know what that tells me? It tells me that in that last breath, he saw Jesus Christ. He saw all that he had heard about in his life. All that Christ said, I have gone to prepare a place. <laughs> Will saw something that we've not seen yet. As I stand here today, I have no doubt that that's where he's at. And I know that he's seen his precious Savior. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verses 6 through 10, it says, Therefore we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. I believe Will Threadgill is accepted of Him. And verse 10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that uh, he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Today, as we mourn the loss, Will Threadgill's not here in this body. His soul left that body that God gave him. You know, my thought was, why God? Why would you allow such a precious child go through so much throughout his short life? And everybody here that knows him knows all that he's been through. But you know what? In all of it, it was to bring glory to God, but it was to touch the lives that Will touched. It was to make an impact in this world. You know, Will Threadgill made a bigger impact than probably 10 people combined <laughs> in their lifetime. I know that he's present today with the Lord. And I believe that when he found that shallow place to cross over, I believe he heard, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Great is your reward. Will had a special gift given to him while he was here on this earth. Ronnie and Lisa also had a special gift given to them. And that gift was Will. But Will's gift was he always had a way to touch those that he met. He never met a stranger, whether they be red, yellow, black, or white. <laughs> he never met a stranger. And he always made an impact in their life that when they left Will, they'd never forget him. He touched all just the same. No matter the mood that you were in, Will always had a way to put a smile on your face. To make you laugh. We all cared about everybody. And he didn't want to see nobody cry or be broken. He wanted to make them laugh. And if Will could be here today to tell you, he'd say, don't weep for me. Remember the good thoughts, the good memories, the funny things. As Tommy said a moment ago, there's many, many a story that could probably be told. Will had many passions in his short life. And as everybody knows, he loved to hunt and fish. And I didn't know this until yesterday, but wanted to have his own Carolina squat vehicle. <laughs> Ronnie said, you know what that is? I said, unfortunately, I do. <laughs> but that was one of his goals. And he had already had the plans to make it. 
As I thought about all that Will had gone through in his 17 years of life, I think of Psalms chapter 23, verses, verse number 4, that says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. We'll pass through that valley many times. Many times where we thought that maybe he wouldn't come out of it. He came through that valley, but he came out successful. Will never feared, never complained. And Will always boldly faced those things that came at him. He always faced it head on. He never run from the problem. But he always made a way. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Will strength to face everything that came at him was from the Lord. 2 Timothy 4 verse 7 says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. There is no doubt that Will fought a good fight. Will's work here was done. The lives that he touched and that he was supposed to touch was accomplished. That seed was planted. His legacy and his example now lies before us today. And if we will all act a little more like Will, this world will be a lot better place. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, Verses 1 and 2 says, To everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. Verse 4 says, And a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Will's time was up. Today we know that there is a great void that is left behind. There's a void that nothing, nothing will ever be able to fill. But the great comforter can give strength to make it through those hard days. He can give you what you need to make it till tomorrow. That void hurts. That void brings mourning and it brings weeping. But there will be times of joy. There'll be times of laughter. You may be by yourself and all of a sudden you'll think of something of Will Threadgill. And you won't help but laugh <laughs> because that's the impact that he made. If Will could tell you anything today, he'd say, don't weep but laugh. I know everyone here today could tell something, as I said a moment ago on Will, but, or that that would take you, or take us through the rest of the day. But while talking with the family yesterday and just listening to those stories, I know Will would want each one of us to laugh. In closing, I heard someone say yesterday that Will didn't lose the battle, but rather he won the victory. He didn't lose any battles. His memory will live on within each one of us, and his life has changed all of our lives forever and for the better. Today we know where Will is. He had made his preparations for leaving this world. Will knew that if he'd draw his final breath, that he would see heaven's gates. But I want to ask you this as we close with this thought. Are you ready? Are you ready? Because in that final moment, when that final breath enters your body, you'll either see heaven's gates or you'll lift your eyes in a devil's hell. Have you asked Christ today into your heart? To the family we love you. Ronnie, Lisa, Helen. My mind just went blank. Haley, I'm sorry. You all have been great friends of mine and my family. A great blessing. And I thank you. And I thank you for this opportunity. Most of all, I thank God for the gift 
of Will Threadgill. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, God, once again we come to you. We come thanking you, Lord, for the life of Will, the lives that he's touched, the seeds that he's planted. God, he gave us something to live by, something that we can all carry away from here to face whatever come, what may, that with you we can accomplish it. That we could take away to have a good attitude, to be bold, to be strong. Father, we pray for the family today that, God, that you'd wrap your loving arms around them. That, Father, you'd give them the peace, Lord, that they need. And God, I pray for each and every one that's here today, Lord, that we would search our heart. That you would search us, God. And Father, that if they haven't made that preparation, if they haven't accepted your Son, I pray today, God, that they would make that choice and that decision the same as will done in his life. For it's in Christ's blessed and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. I am so humbled and honored to be here. And I know Will as a strong will, funny, vibrant, full of energy, never ever complained in him. And I had, you know, like God puts people in our ways for a purpose. And I happened to homebound Will from seventh grade. And I started like every other homebound. But when he used to come to my classroom and he loves candy. So I always give candy after school and it will be there. He said, can I have a dum-dum for a dum-dum? <laughs> I, I would say, here, you can take two or three, depending upon how dum-dum you are. So he used to take the candies and work. And in eighth grade, he happened to be in my math class, and I am his math teacher too. And uh, he used to sit right there in front of the class. And it's a last period. So every day he... Um, the first day he knows me, he thinks that I'm his um, sister or a friend. So I have to remind him often, I'm your teacher. So he used to come to the class 10 minutes late and I said, Will, where did you go? You walk like a duck to go to restroom and come back. And the next day he came there and asked me, Miss John, can I go for a duck walk? <laughs> I. I laughed and I said, of course, yes. And um, I wanted to, I didn't know anything about Will until I became so close with the family. And I wanted to show my support to Miss Lisa one day. So I said, I wanted to come and ride with you to, the, to his hospital visits that you go to MUSE. And um, they gave me an opportunity and I asked my principal and he said, you can take a personal day and nobody will question you. So I took a personal day and then I rode with them. And from the morning, we have to go with a cardiologist, um, oncologist, all the specialists you could name off every, the whole morning it was like, and he was in a wheelchair and uh, he thinks that I don't know driving. Of course I don't. <laughs> I learned driving only when I came here. So he's, he's telling like, Know, going in the direction he said Miss John don't practice driving on me <laughs> he we used to go there and um, whenever we visited every place and that's the day that uh, the doctors has to break the news that his cancer should have probably went to his legs so I was with Miss Lisa and we were there and she was by them by herself and uh, it was so hard and, but he made that scene very funny and he said what type of cast I get you know like quickly he turned around and changed the, um, the the room atmosphere completely what type of cast I can get from now on you know that's what it is what was in his mind and he loves baconator and I said boy it cannot even fit into your mouth 
and it is so big and uh, he used to stay with his grandmother and I used to go to his house. His house is like a zoo and uh, full of uh, animals, cats, dogs and I'm so scared of them. So I won't get out of the car and I sit in the car and I will make phone call. He will never take the phone. He knows that my car is right there. And then I will be like, I. when I turn around, he will say, okay, the dogs are in and all of that is in. So then I go there and sit there with him. And then suddenly there will be a cat coming there and I will be screaming. And he will say, I still can remember that. And he'll say, Mr. John, you need to have a dog. And if I get a dog, he will rejoice in heaven, I know for sure. <laughs> and uh, I went to the hospital and I had a chance or an opportunity that family gave it. And Miss Lisa said to the doctors, I always hear his, I know that he has a new heart. He has two birthdays. So I always had heard him, his heartbeat. And this is his teacher. She has come all the way from Chesterfield. Can she listen to his heart? So I had the honor of getting into that room and they were able to, um, I was able to hear his heartbeat and look at his um, electrocardiogram. And uh, I learned a lot of things from him. And he was in the wreck uh, when he was in the hospital and somebody was talking about it and I went there um, and he was there and he told me, um, somebody was telling about the driver, Josh, and he said, don't complain about my friend. I'm, I'm okay, and I will be okay, and I'm going to come out. And that was a slap on everyone's face right there. And never complain. And he has got the entire fruits of the Holy Spirit with him. And uh, when, I, when I, he and his mother sang in the church, I think, and uh, I was listening, and I said, Bill, you have a um, voice of a nightingale. You can sing. And if I sing, donkeys will come. And you can sing better than me. And I want to hear you sing. And uh, then he used to sit there with me uh, doing work. He will say, Miss John, I want to see donkeys. Can you sing? <laughs> he used to tell me. And also, there are so many uh, circumstances I can uh, relate with him. He made life so um, sarcastic, jovial, funny. And at 17, I learned a lot from him. And um, on the last day, I think in the January, the end of January or February, he came there um, to do some chemistry work. I'm, I love chemistry. So I took that one and I got all the answers ready. And then he came there to take that chemistry in February or end of uh, January. And he was so uh, slim, he lost a lot of weight. And I was telling him, well, what is the secret of your slim? I need to, you need to give it to me. I need to do that. And he said, Miss John, you don't want to do that. And then he had this, he was taking that chemistry. And there were one or two times it was, uh, it was different answers. So I was like, well, this one is wrong. And he will say, Miss John, did you forget that you are a teacher? <laughs> <laughs> and there are so many occasions that with him I had. And, um. When I, last time I saw him was on um, last Tuesday. The family was called in um, to his hospital and uh, I spoke to Haley and they had a chance to see him and his eyes were opened and I was actually wrestling with God and God put him in my life uh, for a purpose and I learned a lot of things from him. All the long suffering, kindness, meekness, patience, and never uh, complain. And we, we as an adult, we complain about so many things in our life. When we are good or money or power for authority, we fight for so many things. But please, if you can take one thing from this young man's life, it's like never complain about things. Never, ever complain. We are all so complacent and blessed with good health. But still, he can. He created an impact on this small community. I came here in 2005. I don't know why God put me in Chesterfield, um, but my father passed away um, on May 8th in India, uh, 2006. I was not supposed. To, I I was unable to go to his funeral, 
and I am here. He passed on May 8th, and I am in his funeral. So God places people with a purpose in our lives. Then we come across somebody, and I consider this as my family, and uh, he has created an impact on this small community, and especially on mine. On May 8th, on last Tuesday, when I saw him, his eyes were opened, and I was in utter shock because they had a, they were able to FaceTime me. I was able to see him with all the um, things. And I don't know what to do. And his eyes, I thought that it was pleading to me, saying that, Miss John, let me go. And I kept the phone once Haley um, turned off the FaceTime. I knelt down on my living room. Nobody is there. And I prayed because I was wrestling with God for so long. On that particular moment, I put my phone and I knelt down and I prayed. Lord, let thy will be done. That's the prayer I prayed. And Will Threadgill had an... Uh, uh, ever, everlasting uh, impression on me, impact on me. I'm not patient like him. I learned how to be patient. I used to complain. I learned not to complain. I used to gossip about people. But when he said, it's going to be fine, with all his difficulties, he said, I'm going to, I'll be fine. Don't, tell, don't talk about my friend. I learned those things from him. I'm trying to learn how to love animals. I will get there one day <laughs> and get a dog and he will laugh and God put him in my life for a purpose and I thank his life, a life well lived, created an impact on these people, on so many lives and he passed on the same day. As my father, I was not in his funeral, but I consider and I take this as honor. And today when I was praying, I told her, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm compelled to speak, two minutes, give me two minutes. And I, I'm honored to speak and thank you so much. Thank you. And I take God as a family that I was in, but thank you so much for giving me a chance. Uh, that he touched my life for sure and I will live up to his expectation and I thank God that God has placed him and thank you so much in closing today I believe that you would agree that every life is a gift and every life that God creates has a plan and a purpose and a path for that life Will Threadgill found that. And his life in 17 years touched what a lot of people can't in 70 or 80 years. Will was one of a kind. In all my years of being in the funeral service, I've never been interviewed by a newspaper until today. They said, we've never heard of a drive through visitation. I said, you've never planned a celebration of life for a wheel thread gill. You've never had one shot wheels, 600 pound elk mounted to the back of your banister at the funeral home. <laughs> Nor have you had two camouflage tents over the cemetery. <laughs> one thing I want to share, how wheels touched my life, and it's just echoing everything that you've shared. I heard an old preacher say years ago that when storms and trials and valleys come in our life, and every person around here understands that statement, no matter where we are in life, they come. So it has the meaning one of two things. It'll either make you a better person or a bitter person. Just as you shared, I'm guilty of feeling sorry for myself. Will Threadgill not only did it make him a better person, but it made everyone else around him a better person. And that's nothing but evidence of the love of God in his life. Had the opportunity to 
be with him at Awanas out at Westfield Creek. There was never a dull moment. <laughs> and I have to throw him under the bus one time and say if there was a few girls around, it was even worse. <laughs> that was just Will. I'm thankful today that God allowed my past to cross with him. And family, thank you for allowing us to be a part of this. I know the family and the obituary and in every way they have thanked so many people. But the ones that you have said thank you to, we're saying thank you to you for allowing Will to touch our lives. Would you pray with me this afternoon? Our Father, our God, Lord, as now it becomes our duty to give back to you what you so graciously gave to us for 17 years. Lord, before Will Threadgill was ours, he was yours. Lord, I truly believe that you sent him here to this earth for a purpose and how well he performed it. Father, I thank you today that now he's free. Lord, he followed your path and you kept your promise to him. You received him into yourself. Thank you for every person that his life has touched and every person that you've allowed to be in Will and his family's life. And Father, until we reunited with Will and all our loved ones, help us, Father, to learn from him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.